Before we start, the introduction about Maharaj. So, Bhakti Prabhu Maharaj, uh, born in Dashiyal and Dalit Belgium, he met devotees in Kent in the summer of 1992. He studied at the University of Wales and earned an MA and PhD in the study of religion. In 1994, he met his holiness Bhakti Chal Swami, who accepted him as his disciple and gave him first initiation on 12 March 1998 and second initiation on 25th August 1999. On the 31st May 2015, he was awarded Sanya's initiation by his holiness Bhakti Chal Swami. He has served as secretary for the global GBC body and the secretary for the GBC executive committee. In 2004, he opened a new ISKCON center in Brussels. Since 2012, he's serving as Bhakti Shastri and Bhakti Vaibhav teacher, conducting on-site and online teaching programs for the College of Vedic Studies. Since 2019, he has also served as Bhakti Vaibhav, Bhakti Vedanta teacher for the Mayapur Institute and the Vrindavan Institute for Higher Education. Bhakti Prabhav Swami is a member of the ISKCON board for examination member of the Shastrik Advisory Council and a member of various committees of the Ministry for Sanyas. He also serves as an advisory board member and teacher for the Iskon Bhagwat Mahavidyala in Europe and North America. So, very quick introduction. Maharaj Gauri is a many word. So, let's welcome Maharaj with a big Hare Krishna chant. Hare, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Uh, I'm sorry you have to hear all these coverings of my palsy. Huh? No, <laughs> I will read first the verse from the ninth chapter of Bhagavad Gita. He knows the title. Ninth chapter. <coughs> Most confidential. So, not sure we are going to understand something. <laughs> it's very confidential. But um, <coughs> the spiritual knowledge is not a scholarly endeavor to get spiritual knowledge. But, um, I experienced that when I did my PhD in the study of religion at the University of Wales. I met, I met scholars and they could quote from Bhagavad Gita and Sanskrit texts and so on. Very learned. But um, none of them could understand that, that they are not a body. What's the use of all this knowledge if you can understand the, the most essential thing? But uh, nine chapters, the most confidential knowledge. And there we will speak about a verse. We will continue about what we discussed yesterday. That. Uh, but as, as an introduction, I will uh, read verse 30. But before we start to speak, read from Bhagavad Gita and hear the scriptures. That, uh, because this knowledge is, is not understood to the brain. That uh, you may have a very high material IQ and high grades at the university, but you can be completely stupid on the level of spiritual IQ. And I've seen that many times. But that is yes. Because spiritual knowledge is the Vedas explain that the first verse of the Bhagavad Purana Jaini Brahma Hridaya Agatha Bhavi. The 
original Vedic knowledge has been given to Brahma, to the heart. We have also a heart, and in the area of the heart is the soul. Actually, this knowledge is in the soul, but it's revealed by Krishna from within in the form of realized knowledge. This knowledge of Bhagavad Gita must become practical. And that's what we are going to speak about today. But therefore, we need mercy to just understand this. That um, there are many false commentators on Bhagavad Gita. They write on Bhagavad Gita, but they don't believe in Krishna. That's the problem. <laughs> That's the problem. They are all stupid. Rascals. You must be empowered by you must have spiritual empowerment to understand, to begin to understand. Like in, in the eleventh chapter of this Gita, in verse fifty-four. Krishna is shown to Arjuna his universal form. <laughs> and then, but uh, Arjuna did not like it. He, he felt it was a godless display of opulence. He liked most to see the two armed form of Krishna, which is the original form. And he asked Krishna, please show me again your two armed form. And first, he showed his four-armed Vishnu form and then his original two-armed form, which is the source of all incarnations. And there Krishna says to Arjun, Arjun, you can understand me as I'm as I am standing here before you only by Pure devotional service by bhakti. bhakti. So bhakti is in higher understanding. You have hyam, that's knowledge, theoretical knowledge. That must be turned first in vihyam, realized knowledge. Then you get liberation. And after liberation, you must develop bhakti. And then you get a higher understanding. You must be under the influence of a different energy. But in, in that purpose of this verse, there is a Prabhupada's guys that uh, one can even not begin to understand Krishna if one does not take shelter of a bona fide spiritual master. So we need the help of someone who has at least get got to that level of Vihyan and is on the way to get Bhakti, love for Krishna. That's the higher energy. Like I I explained yesterday, yes, if you have this Vihyan and you get liberation, you can get liberation from material existence, but you cannot enter in the spiritual world. You, you can merge with the Brahma Jyoti for some time. And it's very nice there. <laughs> you don't have suffering anymore. But after a few millions of years, it's boring. There's nothing to do. You are situated in your own bliss, so-called. <laughs> no, spiritual life, you must go further up to the devotional activities which is beyond liberation. That, um, therefore, before we speak on spiritual subject matters or read from Bhagavad Gita, you must always do two things. That, um, first, we pray for the mercy of the spiritual master. And then, we pray for the mercy of Krishna. Thank for the mass of the spiritual master. We have, like we explained yesterday, Prabhupada has brought his 
holy name, which comes from holy, unmistakable, and is spreaded all over the world. So he is a bona fide representative of this. He's on that level of bhakti, that, uh, which is beyond the transcendental religious. And therefore, we pray to him with this pranama mantra. You can pray with me. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pishaya Bhutale Shimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamani Namaste Saraswati Devi Gaurvani Pacharini Nevishesha Sunyavadi Paschachai Prasatarini And then, before we read, we are offering our respects to the Supreme Personality of the Godhead with the following words. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 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 Apichachutra charo bachati man manan yabak Sadhu ev samantapya samyakya pasito isa. This is text 30 of this chapter 9, the most confidential knowledge. It says, Even if one commits the most abominable action, if he is engaged in devotional service, he is to be considered saintly because he is properly situated. In his determination. So this is about a sadhu. <coughs> Yesterday we explained what a sadhu is. Someone remembered? But talk about an hour about it. Who is a sadhu? Surrender to Krishna. And what is his its first surrender, its first symptom of surrender to Krishna? In this age, how do we do that? Yes, how do we do that? How do we do that? In Kali Yoga. By chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. That's also explained here in this Bhagavad Gita. Krishna says, Mahatma nam to Mahabhaktam, Devi Bhagavad The Mahatma, he knows how to take shelter of the spiritual energy. And in the next verse, he explains how the Mahatma does that. Satatam kirtayantamam. Satatam, always. Kirtan. Always kirtan. Kirtayantamam. Always chanting my glories, always chanting my holy names. Holy name is mentioned in Bhagavad Gita many times. In this, in the eleventh chapter, there, um, in, the, in the prayers of Arjun to Krishna, he says that when everyone who chants your holy name becomes becomes uh, blissful, happy. That, um, and in the 10th chapter, I think Krishna says that uh, I am Japa, the chanting of the holy names. So yes, the chanting is mentioned many times. In that, um, but here Krishna says, the one who surrenders unto me is a sadhu is saintly because even if he does abominable things sometimes, that um, so this I, I will read a part of the purport that uh, please try to listen with attention. It's not easy to understand this. The word Sudracharā used in this verse is very significant 
and we should understand it properly. When a living entity is conditioned, he has two kinds of, of conditioned, act, two kinds of activities. One is conditional and the other is constitutional. So what is our conditional activity in this form? Based on our senses, whatever we do. Identification with the body. Uh, thinking, I'm, I'm a man, I'm Canadian, that uh, I'm a professor or I'm a state speaker, that, uh, that's thinking I'm this body. And, and this, because this body is conditioned. How is it conditioned? It's conditioned, Krishna says, by material nature. Hmm? that uh, by material nature. So you control your heartbeat? No. So after this talk, that um, some are longing for that. There's some prashad, some spiritual food. <laughs> that, uh, and yes, that, um, we, uh, we cannot, the body cannot exist without food. And then we eat and digestion is going on. Do you know how it goes? I spoke with some medical specialists and they told me we, we even the, we even don't, don't know even 5% of how the body works. But, um, it's uh, inconceivable. But, um, of course, Krishna goes further. He says, Sarvasyam, Vidisham, Vishnu, Matashmutyanam, Abhamsam. I'm seated in a glass heart, Krishna says. For me comes remembrance, no less than the thing. Are you sure that you that what you want to remember, that you will remember it the next moment? It doesn't happen all the way. We are conditioned, he said, conditioned by three modes. That, uh, that's, and the devotee knows these modes and wants to get out of it. <laughs> because you are conditioned by these modes. And the process of bhakti, the sadhu, by always connecting with the spiritual energy, it comes healthy out of the influence of the material nature. If you are under the influence of material nature, you Everyone practically identifies with the mind. I'm the feelings in my mind and the emotions. But the mind is just an instrument. It's not us. It's not our feelings. It's brought into our mind by the three modes according to our activities in our previous lives and brings us so-called material happiness and distress. <laughs> but, um, so that's the difference between when we spiritual advanced, it controls this mind and senses. And those who are not spiritual advanced uh, under these modes, they are a puppet. They become, they, they become attached to things and they hanker for things, and they are controlled by this hankering. All the advertising companies know that very well. Hmm? Show the objects, <coughs> hmm? show a car. It may be an ugly car, but there's a beautiful wife, a beautiful woman, just in the car. Hmm? That's, uh, that's, uh, oh, now you don't see that anymore. But I remember 40, 50 years ago. And that's someone smoke. But these people smoking cigarettes and then 
wish you all, all their beautiful teeth. <laughs> Actually, but yeah, now they put on the package and it's, it's smoking can kill you. And you, you can't buy it in public anymore. But it's all changed. It's interesting. But it says one with condition and the other is constitutional. What is that? Constitutional. Constitutional means to understand that because that's the ninth chapter. You must have understood the first nine chapters. It's explained that we are a spirit soul. The consciousness in this body. The consciousness that um, is a symptom of the soul. And the soul is in the area of the heart. The soul, how is the soul kept in the area of the heart? So some things, yeah, the soul is here. They, if we, if you have a heart transplant, we are transplanting the soul. No, <laughs> it's not like that. But the soul is antimatter. Antimatter. It's what cannot be seen by material instruments. It's one ten thousand of a point of a hair. So small, and it's in the heart. But we have a, a, a gross body and a subtle body. And the subtle body, and there is the soul. So in the area of the heart, you have two souls. We, the soul, and the super soul, Paramatma, Krishna. It's Krishna who make who controls this material nature, Maya Dakshana Prakriti, Krishna says. He makes your heart beat. <laughs> your digestion going. He says in Bhagavad Gita, I'm Vaishnava, I, I'm the, the digestion, digestive power. He makes our blood going to the veins at this moment. He's in every cell. He controls every cell, the body. That um, is between every cell, between every atom. He's everywhere. That, but especially as a super soul in your heart. Well, that um, because this uh, the spirit soul is kept in the area of the heart by six airs. We have a Sanskrit name, the six airs. It, it has not, nothing to do with uh, um, the, um, with oxygen or something. <laughs> no, it has very, very subtle airs. And signs as not yet discovered. And but this air under the direction of the super soul keeps this soul in the area of the heart because we desire to be here because we are very attached to the body. That's therefore Krishna keeps us here. But, but it is within the subtle body. Yeah. So, if we sleep at night, just Krishna explains, just, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to read the entire purple because I have to explain at every point, otherwise we don't understand anything. It's nice to hear. But if you don't understand what's conditional and con constitutional, the rest will make no sense. And because it makes no sense, we think it's nonsense. <laughs> that, uh, that, uh, the fault lies always with another, not with me. Uh, the 13th chapter. 13th chapter. Text 30, I think. Yeah. Mm. 
Yata prakasyat yeka kritsnam lokam imam dhavi. Shetram shati tatakasnam prakasyat bhagata. The son of Bharata, the sun alone eliminates all this universe, so does the living entity, one within the body, eliminate the entire body by consciousness. So like the, like you have the sun, the sun gives light in, in, in the universe, that, um, like that, the, the, that's the soul, one ten thousand of a point of the head, in the area of the heart, is the is the cause of our consciousness. It's here, the heart. There, in the heart, we have this red corpuscles which are uh, created by, by the fusion with, uh, I think, with the oxygen. And that, uh, so they, but the energy that makes that fusion that, that creates the red corpuscles, the soul. That is what Prabhupada said. That the, the, the energy, the source of all energy in the body, in the heart. As long as this soul is in this body, the body is, a, is alive. The body is never alive. It's the soul that makes it alive. That, um, that, that the life is coming from the soul. That, um, if there is no soul in the body, the soul comes out immediately, the body decomposes. Finished. That, uh, nothing works anymore. It starts rotting. That, so the life is the soul, and the soul is eternal. But, um, but it's situated within the subtle body. That, um, and uh, like if if we do it, if we sleep at night, hmm, then the gross body is resting, hopefully. <laughs> I try, but sometimes it doesn't happen. The gross body is resting, and uh, sometimes we dream. That means the gross body is resting, but the subtle body is active. The mind, intelligence, ego is is active when we dream, and it creates its own nonsense world. world when we dream, right? That uh, it means. The consciousness is withdrawn somewhat from the gross body into the subtle body. Hmm? But do you dream the whole night? Then if you if you would dream the whole night, in the morning, do you feel rested? No. You need deep sleep, deep sleep, right? Yeah. In deep sleep, so the, this is explained all, all in the Vedic scripture. In, 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 like, now I'm so so called awake, Shakyati, and then when you are uh, sleeping and dreaming, Svapna. But, but when you go in deep sleep, also the subtle body is resting. It's resting. And and the consciousness is redrawn within the soul. That, and that's called susukti. And that's a peaceful state. That uh, if you wake up in the morning and you had a good deep sleep, you, you, you say, yes, I'm rested. I had a good sleep. Like you remember, you had a good sleep. So you are still there in the deep sleep. But it's but it's redrawn into the it's redrawn within the soul at that moment. The consciousness is still there, but there is no awareness of the subtle gross body. It means we are not a subtle gross body. Try to understand this. It's not easy. 
And but when when you are in this teaching, this susupti, it's very peaceful. It's like Brahman realization. Of course, in the Brahman realization, you have you have bliss. We don't experience that bliss because we are still connected, covered by this subtle misfortune. That brings up the question, yes. Is so why are we in why are we in this body? That, um, it's because we have forgotten, and that's mentioned here, our constitutional position. Constitutional position. Srila Prabhupada was walking one time in one in a park somewhere in, in America. And Tamala Krishna Maharaj was with him. And, and uh, like, yeah, many times in the winters, in the park, there is snow and ice, and there was ice on the pathway. And Prabhupada was walking with his cane, he's moving in his cane, and, and he comes out, out such a uh, piece of frozen water and he takes his cane and he starts to break the ice and Tamal Krishna was uh, uh, asked Srila Prabhupada why are you breaking that ice Prabhupada come to continue to break the ice and, and he said this is the not the normal condition of the water The simile, being in this body, in this material world, is not our constitutional position. We don't belong here. We are spiritual beings. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, I'm the source of all the material and the spiritual world. And the great sages, they have understood that and they develop love for me. They love me. <laughs> that, that's the highest spiritual energy by which you can go back to the spiritual world. We come from this spiritual world. You see, this is my arm. This is a gross arm. Why is this gross arm there? Under the gross arm, you have a subtle arm of the subtle body. The subtle body has a form. Krishna says at the time of death, your consciousness, depend, your consciousness at the time of death depends, that, that, um, that will determine the next body. That um, someone is dying and, and he's, he's thinking of his wife, and the subtle body gets the form of a woman already <laughs> in seed form. And um, at the time of death, yam yam vam is from from town, ante kale from tam tam, and pretty count, you know, subtle dad baba baba. At the time of death, the, the consciousness we have will determine our next body because the form is already formed in the subtle body in the subtle body and uh, it's this is explained of course in the 15th chapter verse 8 and 9 mm. So the living entity in the material world carries its different conceptions of life from one body to another, as the air carries aromas. Thus it takes one body and begins quit it to take another, Krishna says. So Krishna is in our heart as a super soul, and he knows our consciousness and fulfills our desire. Oh, you want to be a woman in next time? Okay. Be prepared. 
or or you have in, or, or your your entire life you have because it, it's not that in the at the last moment of your life you you have you have the power to think of what you want no it's not like that that is a very it, 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 it's a very disturbing condition all the organs shut down and where is your consciousness going to take shelter of it's going to do to take shelter of uh, what it what is be what it has been attached to during our lives that is going to take shelter So if your if your life was like most people are focused on eating, drinking, sex life and the funding, and that is what you like to do, that consciousness will not manifest. But at the last time, days of your life, last moments, that point. And that's what you want, that's the desire also, the attachment you have for you. And, and Krishna said, okay, I give you in your next life the, the body of a pig, a hog, because you, you want to eat everything without, without distinction, that, uh, and you want unlimited sex, here you have your opportunity, you are a hog. You can eat what you want. That it, it, even eating stool will taste as halaba. <laughs> <laughs> and sex with your mother, with your sister, with your brother, nobody will complain. So, yeah, the, the mentality we develop, that is what you will get in your, in your next life. That, that, um, and that is what Krishna is saying here. That Satyam Saksis Vasnam Sa Rasnam Jana Nepasa Adhistya Namasa Pishyam Upasivata. The living entity does take an, another gross body, obtains a certain type of ear, eye, tongue, nose, and sense of, stops, of, of touch with our group about the mind. He enjoys this a particular set of sense objects. So, there you go again. You, Krishna transfers the subtle body to, because the subtle body is contaminated with that consciousness, material consciousness surrounding the soul. And brings you to the, the womb of the next mother, hopefully a human mother. Well, for most people, probably not according to the, the knowledge of Bhagavad Gita. We see how, that, how they live, especially in the Western world, also in India, like animals. They become animals. You get the body of an animal. It's, uh, yeah. That's, so that is to be avoided. That. Uh, but then I was explaining, yes, you have this arm, you have the gross arm, you have the subtle arm, but Prabhupada said, the spiritual senses are there. Under this subtle arm, there are the spiritual senses, but they are covered. You are not using them. But, uh, but the spirit soul, has his own thinking, feeling, and willing, explained in the Bible. But that's now become active, it's inactive, inactive. It's taken over by the subtle body. Because the subtle body, the, the spiritual body, you have the spiritual body, you have the subtle body, and you have the gross body. And we don't need the subtle and the gross body to exist. That, but because our consciousness has become perverted by contact with this material nature, we take one body after another. 
within the spiritual world, everyone has a spiritual body, and that's eternal, <laughs> full of bliss and knowledge. Here, the gross body is just the opposite. It's asat, it's temporary, it will disappear soon. It's full of ignorance. We don't know even how it works. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> that, uh, and, and bliss, yeah, eating a pizza, you get some bliss, maybe, <laughs> for five minutes, and it's finished. And then the problem starts again. So, so therefore, constitutional position means, what does it mean? Just explained in the Bhagavatam, find it in a verse that explains it very clearly in the second canto of the Bhagavatam, 206. Muktir ityam vatarupam svarupena japastuti. This uh, explains what mukti is, real liberation. Hmm? Liberation is the permanent situation in the form of the living entity after he gives up changeable gross and subtle material bodies. So you must give up the gross and the subtle body. Yeah. How do you give that up? By giving up your attachment to everything in this world. That, uh, that's called material attachment. How do we give up this material attachment? By, cre by creating, by spiritual attachment. And that's a sadhu. The sadhu knows how to do that. That, um, that by satatam tirtayantamam, by always chanting these holy names. But we explained, so this is, in, in, in this first then of today, 9.30, so we, we explained the first two lines of the purpose. <laughs> first two lines only. That's uh, to understand the rest, uh, maybe another time, but it says, yes, even if one commits the most abominable action, if he's engaged in devotional service, is to be considered sanely because he's properly situated in his determination. So from the moment we start to chant his holy names, we are considered sadhu because we come in contact with these holy names. But to really come in contact with these holy names, we explained that uh, chanting the holy names, the holy name itself, Nama, Nam Nama Kai Bodhan Niya Sarva Sakris. So Allah, all the spiritual energies are in this holy name. Holy name is very powerful. The holy name is Krishna. Krishna has many names, also Ram or Vishnu. The power of, of thousand names of Lord Vishnu is equal to one name of Ram. <laughs> and one name of Ram, three, now three names of Ram as the power of one name of Krishna. So, one name of Krishna is how many, how, how, how much powerful is the name of Krishna than the name of Vishnu? 3,000. 3,000, yes. <laughs> that, uh, so that's the holy name. It's very powerful. It's so powerful that it can, if we chant it, it takes away all our karma. That uh, all uh, it purifies, purifies our heart from all these attachments to this world. We become attached to Krishna. It's going to bring us back to our constitutional position in the spiritual world. Beyond liberation. Because liberation. We have two, two stages in liberation. We have the liberation from the material energy, from the 
first. And then the, the second is realizing who you are. That's another thing. You can realize that you are not a body. You are a spirit soul, but what is a spirit soul? There's no explanation by what it is. Am I from social being okay? I'm, I'm a past and past of this thing. Yeah, this, the soul is made of the same stuff, substance as Krishna. Krishna is made of such itananda. We are made of such itananda. That eternal full of knowledge and bliss. That um, you see things that. Um, so that is the position in the spirit soul, in its pure state. That's, um, but, but then we are a part and parcel of Krishna. Okay? Like the fingers is a part and parcel of the body. If the, if the finger is connected with the body and brings the food to the mouth, then yes, we feel the body becomes nourished. And that nourishment will also nourish the finger. Right? But when the finger is cut off, cut off from the body, hmm? then it immediately starts to, to decompose, useless, and it's disconnected. That means the part and parcel must serve the whole. We are servants of God. That's what we are. Our constitutional person, our constitutional position is servant of God. But now we we disagree with that, and therefore we are here. But still we are servants. We, we are still serving God, Krishna, through the material energy. Everyone is serving. So if you go to work, you serve your boss. The wife serves the husband, the husband serves the wife. If someone has no one, no, no, no one to serve for, they, they get a dog, they serve the dog. Uh, you see they're walking in the park and 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 and, and then uh, putting their stool in a plastic bag. <laughs> they are serving. Everyone is serving. That's, uh, because that's our constitutional position. But if we if the the serving is directed in Yukta Yoga. Connect, connecting with Krishna. Yukta mean, yoga means connection. Yukta means devotional service. If we connect in devotional service, like the Mahatma, by this chanting of these holy names, we become reconnected. That, and we become blissful. By serving Krishna, we become blissful. Krishna gives us bliss to the heart and satisfaction. That um, from, a, from a materialistic part of, from a materialistic side, we think to become a servant, that's not so good. They will exploit us and so on. But we don't like that idea to become a servant. <laughs> but, but if you serve on the spiritual platform, Krishna, then you become connected with the source of spirit of bliss. The source is described as bhakti ras. Bhakti ras. Yeah. So it's a question to be connected, reconnected. So this is an iPhone 14, many apps. Hmm? But because sometimes we are out of data, <laughs> no internet. But the use of all these apps. So it, Krishna consciousness means connecting with Krishna. 
And that makes us blissful, happiness. That's what everyone wants. Everyone wants to love and be loved. But that love, if it is projected to, towards Krishna, then it's a source of spiritual bliss. And we become purified from that. But to make that connection, we have to give up our offensive mentality. And again, we need to serve well, in that time. Because Krishna says here, yes, my, my devotee, even by material attachment from before, is, is still attached to someone, to something. Yes, still is a sadhana. Krishna also, in the second chapter, said to Krishna, Nami Bhakti Apranashati. <coughs> my devotee, oh Arjun, declare it boldly. My, that my devotee will never perish. <laughs> Encouraging him. Paladepity Abhushan is one of our commentators in our line. And he, he has spiritual vision, and I put some lines between the verse, verses. Between the verses. And then Arjun is ask, asking, and saying to Krishna, you, you say, Nami Bhakti Apranashati. Uh, my body, my, my, my devotee never perishes, declare it boldly. Why are you asking Krishna? Why are you not doing it yourself? And Krishna replied, I'm from Atura. And those from Atura, they are known as cheaters. <laughs> so no one will believe me. But if you say it, Arjun, everyone will, will believe you. But Krishna says, we are from Altura, we are cheaters, but we are, we don't cheat, we, we won't cheat any those whom we love. That's very significant. Everyone in this world is cheated by this material energy and is completely in illusion. Krishna cheats them. <laughs> but, uh, but if you develop love for Krishna Bhakti, then that cheating is finished. You, you start to see things as they are. That is the great power of Bhakti. That, um, but to, to connect, we must chant these holy names with, without offenses. And that is what we start to discuss yesterday, we mentioned 10 offenses. We were discussing the first offense. What about the first offense? Sadhuninda, blaspheming devotees who have dedicated their lives for the preaching of the name. Because in this, in the matter of this <coughs> chanting, we have three stages we have to go through. We have the offensive stage. There, the, 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 the full power of the holy name will not manifest. A little longer. You become still inspired to chant it. Like I said yesterday, I'm chanting it for 33, 30, 34 years now, every day in the holy names. I'm still doing it. You can try to chant Coca Cola for 32 years. <laughs> After 10 minutes, you're boring. Still, just because there is spiritual energy, you continue doing that. that, that Otherwise, it's no inspiration. But uh, when, when the heart becomes pure, the chanting becomes nectar. But before we come to that stage, we have to give up these offenses. Uh, ten main offenses, we are discussing just the first one, and we started to discuss it yesterday for two hours. <laughs> Which we are, I'm still just at the beginning of the presentation about how, how to overcome this sadhuninda and, and develop nice relationships with the devotees. And then um, the next stage, when we give up this offensive mentality, the clearing stage. Then things become clear. 
of material attachment, we understand, we realize I'm a fool. <laughs> I, why am I attached to this life and this body? Why am I attached to giving pleasure to the senses? Soon, this body is finished. Everything you want to achieve in this world that will be finished soon. It's for nothing. And Krishna explains in Bhagavad Gita, one who lives for the pleasure of the senses lives for nothing. <laughs> but like an animal, wants for the pleasure of the senses. It's without the question. Human life, the Veda says, is at the Vedanta says, Atato Brahma Jivnasa. Now you have the human form of life. It's time to inquire about who you are. But, uh, I spoke with many people of all of different religions. And when you ask them, according to your religion, but where do you come from before that? And where you you go off after that? What happens? That uh, and who are you? You can't believe it. They can't answer this question. No idea. <laughs> Practicing some religion, where do you come from? Where do you go? Who are you? These are essential questions. Why am I suffering? Why am I in this body? That, uh, yes. that you, you, you go in the street here, you ask some Canadians that uh, what's the goal of life? They will say, Jolo, you live only once, enjoy. But where is the proof that you live only once? Can they prove it? That uh, you live only once? And what's with your enjoyment? Pizza. <laughs> Eating a pizza of sexual intercourse. 10 seconds and then feeling miserable because <laughs> they enjoy it. Good luck. But uh, it is ignorance. We have to come out of this ignorance and understand we are not this body, not this subtle body. If you understand, you are, on, you, 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 because the, the first thing is. You must understand that I'm not this mind. This mind is an instrument. But I'm not this feeling, this emotions. That's how material nature controls it and controls you. It feels good, do it. <laughs> it's because it feels good. I, I like to eat meat that may kill thousands of cows. I feel good. As long as I feel good, it's fine. And, uh, and that, uh, I don't care. If I don't feel good, then I'm uh, going to suppress my feelings. That's not good for my health. The demoniac philosophies is uh, all pervading in this uh, it's, uh, but, uh, but yes but Krishna says in his verse is um, yeah the sadhus they are always saintly persons. So the first thing is we must we must recognize who is more advanced than us. No doubt the devotees, those who are practicing spiritual life, by chanting these things, by hearing about Krishna, 
by studying the Vedas. Those who are pure in heart, the symptoms of one who is spiritual advanced is abhaya, sattva, samstudya, jnana, yoga, yavastudya. Abhaya is fearless. He knows I'm not his body. But um, you have to leave this body anyway. <laughs> Today or tomorrow. But it's all temporary. My time is it's nearly over. I'm in the year of old age now. <laughs> and then the, the middle part comes. Then I'm a few years, then I will be 17, and then 75, and then finish. That's out of the body. But this is reality. That, uh, but we are not this body. And there's an urgency to realize that. And when you realize that I'm not this mind, I'm not this body, all these problems in this world are not so important. So interesting. But, um, it comes and it goes. And that, uh, sometimes we suffer, sometimes we happy. But um, Prabhupada said, uh, the caravan passes, and the dogs will bark. <laughs> but still, the caravan will pass. <laughs> So this is abiding fearless. That uh, sattva samstudi, pure in heart, purity in heart, and body. Purity in heart means acting as spirit, so not as the body. You can understand I'm not a body, I'm a spirit, so I'm eternal. Good news. That uh, Krishna starts with good news in Bhagavad Gita to the He says, yes, you and all these kings and me, Krishna says, have existed in the past, are existing now, and will never cease to exist in the future. We are eternal. Is that not good news? Then Krishna gives the bad news. Tainos means that after you come, from child, from child, from child. We are not, we are stuck on an We have this body <laughs> which, which changes constantly from boy to you to old age. Every seven years, six, seven years, all the cells of your body are changed. Are you a different person? Where's your baby body? Are you a different person now? No, it's a different body, that's all. But the person within is the soul, still the same. That, um, that all your cells are changed. That, um, but to realize that, we, we should cease, we should first understand who is more spiritual advanced than us by the symptoms. That um, jnana yoga pervastuti. When we are spiritual advanced, has knowledge, realized knowledge. And he does not become disturbed by happiness and distress. That uh, he's not interested in this happiness and distress. Happiness and distress is experienced by the mind. In the mind, you experience that. But we are not a mind. Because we identify with the mind, and that identification is very strong. That uh, that can only be cut really that identification by ardent spiritual practice, like this chanting of these holy names, by worshiping the deity, by hearing the pastimes of Krishna, hearing from the Vedas. That. Um, but uh, those who are spiritually advanced, the devotees of Krishna, you should always respect them. Because if you disrespect them, 
dan you commit upper rounds. And this chanting will have no much, no much effect. And that uh, it said in the scriptures, whoever criticizes such a Vaishnava goes to hell birth after birth. For him there is no path for real liberation. For him there is no path. For real liberation can alone, alone only be attained by bhakti. And bhakti you can only get from one way is bhakti, from the spirit of the past. So this is a very important lesson. It is that one who criticizes a pure devotee, a, a Vaishnava, he will be punished by Yamaraj. Who is Yamaraj? That, uh, yeah, that Yama is a lot of death, death. It means at the time of death, the soul and the subtle body, before going to the next body, is going to Yamaraj. And he will assign you a new destination that, um, and your subtle body will be prepared for your next destination. But Yamaraj is a special case. He's also a devotee of Krishna, your devotee of Krishna. He has tilak like us in his subtle body. <laughs> but uh, yeah. And it, it is the Gupta, this is accountant. Yeah, the super soul keeps having all our activities which are not Krishna conscious. That um, it's all registered by Krishna in the heart. And Gupta, he gets this information and gives it to Yamaraj. Like, uh, there is a story of, of a devote, of, of, of someone. It's not a devotee, but that's 40 years ago in Moscow. The devotees were doing Harinam. And this person was a drunkard and, and a woman hunter. But, but when he saw the devotees, he was always, when they did Harinam, he, he, he would always wave to them. Joyful. At a certain moment, he comes, he will be scared, but uh, he gets square and he gets, gets into an accident. And he gets into the hospital undergoing surgery. During the surgery, it, his heart stops beating. And at that time, that uh, doctor's wedding is finished. But at that time, the man had, had a near death experience. And in his subtle body, he becomes before Yamaraj. And Yamaraj looked at him very stern. And he looked to Gupta and said, Read me, what did he do? And a, a whole list of simple activities, eating meat and drinking and so on and so on. And it went on for a long time. And then, um, and, uh, Yamaraj looked at a person in the subtle bone, and it doesn't look good. Then Yamaraj looked at Gupta and said, but did he do something good? That, uh, and, and the man said, yes, he was waving to the devotees many times when they did Harinam. And Yama said, oh, that's very good. Well, uh, Nikolkovich, what if we, if, we, if we give you another chance? 
And at that moment on the operation table, the doctor was, oh, his, his heart beating is coming back. It's coming back. And it was back in his body. But he remembered what he went through. And after his surgery, when he was cured, he went straight to the Hare Krishna temple. Became a devotee of Krishna. So, yes, you can say. But generally, Yamaraj, in, uh, we, we, devotees who are following the principles and chant the holy name, they will never come in contact with him. That's explained in the sixth canto of the Bhagavatam. But, um, but I remember one of my godfathers asked to Bhakti Charumaraj, uh, to, to, to Bhakti Charumaraj, my spiritual master, when he was still with us. And asked, what, what if I come before Yamaraj? Well, he said, even if you come before Mar Mar before Yamaraj, and you see Mara, you see Yam Yamaraj, Yes, Tilak til on that Sikam. What will you say? Well, the was a, let us say, Hare Krishna. <laughs> yes, Yamaraj will see in, in his records that you are a devotee. So he will invite you to your house and read the Bhagavatam for you. <laughs> so we want to go to Yamaraj. He's, he's one of the few devotees, the Marjans. He wanted association. When the sages of Namisaranya uh, had their discussions on the Bhagavatam, they invited Yamaraj, and Yamaraj was in the audience, so nobody died in that song. <laughs> anyway, this is going too esoteric. Being put, we will punished by Yamaraj. One who criticizes the sadhu is not situated in bhakti. So devotees, even devotees who are criticizing others, we un can understand they are not situated in bhakti. They are situated in apparat. Okay. That. Therefore, it's said in the it, it's said in the nectar of instruction, Opakos Fami, for those who know this. That uh, it is it is advised in text five. One should offer respect to a devotee, who, to, to to someone who even chants once time one time Hare Krishna. Yeah, we, as, we give respect in the mind to such a person, and to devotees who took initiation, we offer obeisances, and one should serve that devotee. Was lost the propensity to criticize others. One should serve that pure devotee. It's by that we can understand who is a pure devotee. He does not criticize others, other devotees. That, um, yeah. Anyway, we have. I've, I began on the introduction today, second day of the introduction. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow we will get a little further in the subject matter of Sadhu Nina. But, that's, uh, but I think it's very important that you understand things in depth. And I don't like to explain something which uh, is on a too high level, then you don't get anything. So, any question, comment? Yes. Of how to be fixed up in chanting? How to be fixed up in chanting? That uh, the ten of is, yeah, the, 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 after these ten of we, we say always that um, uh, it is also an offense to be inauthentic while chanting. So that is an offense to be not authentic by chanting. It must be 
Atante. Balchanti. Plasma nomads used to explain to me. We would always say repeating syllable passwords. Okay. First, give your attention to Krishna and then give your love. Krishna is a person. He is in this holy name. So, I'm going to try to explain you the, um, the answer in your question in a way that Ray Dastapur explains this. And that's, he said, you can only chant his holy name appropriately if you are situated in Sambandha Dham. Sambandha Dham. Sambandha Dham is knowledge of our relationship with Krishna. Because the purpose of the, the chanting of the holy name is to experience Bhakti Ras. Bhakti Raj is experienced when we have a relationship with Krishna, when we serve Krishna in relation. That, so that uh, this Bhakti Raj is different from, well, first, what does it mean, Bhakti Raj? Bhakti is devotion, and Raj means, because it's a Sanskrit word, and ras in Sanskrit means taste, or but in that case, there's no real English word for it. That's therefore, Popart translated as mellows and, 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 and spiritual emotions towards Krishna in serving that, and, and the happiness that one derives from that. It's not from this world. Spiritual happiness. It's the satisfaction of the soul. It's very blissful. But, and it's constantly that happiness in, in our relationship with Krishna. But we must be constantly in our relationship with Krishna. So that is called that being situated in that relationship is called Sambandha Hyam knowledge of our relationship with Krishna. And that knowledge has three aspects. Knowing who Krishna is, that uh, it's not easy to know who Krishna is. Why is it important to, to know Krishna if you want to have a relationship with Krishna? Can you love someone you don't know? So you have to, to get to know Krishna, who Krishna is. And when, when you get to know Krishna, you come to know, oh, I'm not Krishna. I'm a part of Krishna. I'm, and then one understands, I'm not Krishna, I'm a part of Krishna. And then the third thing in Sambandha Gyan is, what is our relationship? Our relationship is, I'm the servant of Krishna. Like in the 15th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, 15th chapter is called Purushottam Yoga, Yoga of the Supreme. And then at the end, you have three verses, and that's called the Trishloka Gita. It's the, this is the, the summary of the whole Vedanta Sutta, of the whole Vedanta. And Krishna in the first verse say, says, there's a conditioned soul and there's a liberated soul. And next verse says, I'm above the conditioned and the liberated soul. I control them both. For Krishna, they are both conditioned. That one is conditioned by the spiritual energy and the other by the material energy. That, um, so that's basic knowledge, who Krishna is, that, and who we are. If one has that understood, then one must understand one's relationship 
in a relationship is one of service. But a relationship of service means it's not service like in this material world where we become a slave. No, when you serve Krishna, then what happens? Apps, internet, remember? They are connected. You are, you are connected with the source of all bliss, the powerhouse. Then you become blissful, ecstatic. It, it, it's a happiness which is not from this world, which is not on the body platform. It's experienced directly in the soul, not in the body. But the body will show different symptoms. That And they are all, if you want to know about all these symptoms, you read Chaitanya Shaitamrita, Amki Aldila, and you will get into the ecstasies of Lord Chaitanya. He is appearing as the, as in the form of his own devotee. And how he became blissful, <laughs> he will also become blissful, <laughs> not to his extent, but that's, that is that is just the purpose. If you, if you are situated in that relationship, so your, your chanting must become a service to Krishna. That's your service, the chanting. We serve Krishna with all our love. But to give our love first, we have to be conscious of. And that is someone like Dan, conscious of one's relationship with Krishna. Our relationship is Das. When, when, when I got the initiation of the Brahmachari, my spiritual master gave me the Brahmachari name Lila Sukha Das. Das. Lila Sukha. Lila means the passing of Krishna. If you hear that, then you understand your relationship with Krishna, and you become super happy. But, um, so that, that is the point. You must think yourself as a servant and offer this chanting out of love. And then you get connected. But then the mind must be absorbed in Krishna and in the chanting not in anything else. But what happens? We start to chant. Hmm? And uh, you, you, you can chant in different ways. That um, can chant in the mode of it. <laughs> or you can chant in the mode of passion. Ay, Krishna, re, Krishna, 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 Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> uh, your mind is not with Krishna. You're going to chant. In the mode of goodness, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, life is good. <laughs> but, but that will also not help. You must chant with love, with all your love in it. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama. You put your love in it, all the love you have. And then it's easy to control the mind. Because, yeah, in Bhagavad Gita says, when the mind wanders, you have to bring it back in the control of the. And that, uh, but, but it becomes a whole fight. You start to chant, and the mind wants to do something else, all your problems today, and that, and that. And this person said that to you, that, oh, yes. But, uh, and you chant, but there is no attention. But, uh, the mind wants to do something else. Because we are full of this apparatus. 
Thank you. 